Hey everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And this little clip is going to be about using white. Uh, not for the boo-boo pin, which we have all learned about, hopefully. Um, but it is actually going to be about using the white ink tense pencil as well as the boo-boo pen, except as rather than a boo-boo, it's going to actually be used, which you see here as, as a highlight. Now, I wanna zoom out so that you can see what this owl is on. By the way, this is a brand new DTF. I am working towards getting an entire quilt done with DTFs, and I found this pattern on uh, Shutterstock. Really cool pattern. I'm, I'm really quite happy with how this has turned out. Um, and I'd, I'll address some more about ironing uh, at a later video, but this one was a real snap. Uh, the fabric, by the way, is a hand-painted fabric that I bought years and years and years ago. And so the other thing I wanted to address was putting a DTF on an already painted fabric and then painting on top of that painted fabric. So this is going to kind of be a multi-part video, um, but I really wanted to, to point out how to use the ink tense pencil on anything that is other than white. Now, you can use it on things that are already colored. I have advised several clients that if they have gotten their colors way too dark, which we all know that ink tense pencils can be uh, very vivid, that you can go over it with this pencil and lightly go over it with fabric medium and it can really lighten up your color. But what I really like about it here, and I'm gonna zoom into the owl's face here just for a moment, is believe it or not, and let's see if I can show you the difference. So his feathers up here, and I'll do an example of this here in just a minute, his feathers are going to be white. Uh, a barn owl has very white feathers throughout its body. And again, given the, the other colors that I'm using, I really wanted something to stand out. And I didn't want cream because I don't think it would really look good against this kind of taupe colored background. So what I went ahead and did was I experimented on this actually yesterday when I colored it. And then I came in today to do some additional highlighting with the white acrylic marker. So real quick, um, let's just choose this feather right up here. Now you're gonna see, uh, you kinda have to press pretty hard. And I, it, it's really, I think, a question of two things. One, this fabric that is already painted. I gotta be honest with you. It's got a very kind of rough surface um, it's, it's beautiful fabric. I, I absolutely knew the minute I saw it, this is what I wanted this owl on. But it requires a bit more pressing on the pencil. So all of you who are heavy-handed, woohoo, this, this would be perfect for you. For those of you who are light-handed, um, I'm going to show you a trick here in a minute. So we've got that down. Hang on while I grab my paintbrush. And I'm going to dip the brush into the fabric medium. And let's look at this. Let me see if I can zoom out so we can get this. Actually, I beg your pardon. Let's see, that should do it. And I'm, by the way, since this is a DTF, ooh, I don't care one way or another if I get my fabric medium on there uh, because I can come back in while it's still wet and actually take off any of this white residual that's on there. In fact, let's just do that right now um, with my big old fat finger. So it's gotten down there a bit. So see, I, I just come along and I just kind of wipe it with my finger. That's not the most professional way of doing things, but it works. Okay, so that's one way. But now let's assume for a minute, and I'm gonna grab my brush with my right hand. Let's assume that you are light-handed. Well, the easier way to do this is to go ahead and put your fabric medium down first. Let me grab some more fabric medium. Um, you know what's really nice about DTS is when they're when they're when they get wet, you can actually see where where they got wet, and so then you can come back in and and wipe them a bit clean. All right, 
So now that I've got that wet, now what I'm going to do is come in as I put my, excuse me, put my brush down and I'm gonna start coloring directly. Get this zoomed out. Let me, let me do this. Let me zoom in this way. Ah, there we go. And I'm just going to color. Now, I'm pressing pretty darn hard. Now, as you see, it did get on the black. Don't worry, and oh, this is good. I like getting these nice close-ups so you guys can see exactly what's going on. And I'm gonna bring a little bit down here, a little bit over there, come up along the line. Um, even sometimes with a DTF, you can feel that little bit of edge. And again, I just wipe a bit. Uh, yep, there we go. Just wiped a bit with my finger, and if, if I'm really gonna get, funny with my fingers. I sometimes actually smooth things out with my fingers rather than with my with my brush, which is maybe not such a smart idea, but you, you get the point here. So you can go either way. Let me just maybe smooth this out with a, with a pencil, which is the nice thing about this. But the reason why that's kind of working so well is, as I think I've mentioned before, you can have up to three layers of coloring before the fabric just says no more. I can't take any more of this. Um, so notice that this went on very smoothly, partly because the surface of this cotton, and by the way, this is not a cotton sateen, it's just a plain old 100% cotton, but the coloring um, actually went down pretty smooth. And I'm just coming back over the other one where I put down and, and trying to get some more white down. Now, Again, this is very up close, so you're gonna see all of the kind of little ridges I've got here. I probably will come back in and smooth that out with a brush. Um, you can either do it with your original wet brush or you can grab yourself a new dry brush and kind of smooth that out. But I wanted you to see what white can do for you. Now, come down here and compare with this white bit of acrylic paint that I used, which is, of course, more opaque than the ink tense pencil is. And you'll see that I, I tried to use it as a highlight because I liked the way the feathers looked, but other than using gray, which I really didn't wanna do, the only other option that I had was to use a whiter white, whiter than what the ink tense pencil looked like. And I think you can see that here. And let me just show you real quick. Now these are one of those cheapo Chinese knockoff um, acrylic markers that I buy. Um, and you guys know I always buy from Timu or Sheen or even sometimes, um, but this is the one, let me zoom out here. You can just see it's acrylic marker. Um, it's no big deal. Um, these are dime a dozen if you go on to those two websites or Amazon. I mean, you can go look up white acrylic marker and I'm sure you can find a set of those as well. Okay, that's just about it. Let me zoom back out again to my friend, Mr. Owl here. He's coming along nicely. By the way, just so you know that I have used nothing but ink tense pencils throughout the rest of this. Let me zoom out even further. There you go. Um, at this point, I don't know that I'm going to color with anything else except maybe, maybe, maybe some around his face, some of these bands. I might come in and use a Jelly Roll Stardust pen with all the sparkle, or I will consider using Unicorn Spit. Um, he is eventually going to have bling on him, so I don't want to put something down that bling cannot attach itself to. And that's the other thing I'll try to put out to you guys is I did a denim shirt not too long ago. I used metallic paint. Then I blinged the you-know-what out of it. Well, sadly, half of my bling has fallen off. I put it in the wash last night, and uh, when I pulled it out, there was bling all over my washing machine. So, word to the wise, that if you are putting, going to be putting bling on something, you do not want to use a metallic surface, and frankly, you don't want to use gel pen as well. All right, so that's it, as always. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.